Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to another TV review. Today we're checking out the Amazon Fire TV Omni QLED. This is their brand new 2022 Omni QLED TV. This is a full array local dimming TV. And this is the 65 inch right behind me. We have it actually just going through its ambient background and uh, it's a very fun TV. So last year, Amazon released its own branded Fire TVs and it was a good start, right? It was a nice place to start. And this year we have a newer version of the TV with uh, QLED uh, technology and it's got full uh, local dimming. We have 80 zones on this TV. Now the setup process and unboxing for this TV is pretty smooth and you can easily do this by yourself. Uh, but I recommend if you're if you can't, of course, lift heavy boxes, definitely get some help to actually go ahead and set up this TV. Comes in 65 and 75 inches. Now, the TV does come with two uh, uh, leg stands and they are both placed at either end, allowing for a lot of space to place a sound bar underneath, which is pretty nice. A lot of TVs nowadays tend to do a bunch of funky different stands. I like this, it's simple and easy. Now, your ports are all on the right-hand side, so if you're facing the TV on the right side of the TV there, and this comes with four HDMI ports. You have an ethernet port. You also have an IR uh, adapter port. Uh, to give you better connectivity with the remote control, which I'm not a big fan of for having that there. Uh, but you also have an EARC port uh, for this TV. Now the EARC is a HDMI 2.1 port, and this TV supports, of course, uh, a lot of gaming functionalities with that HDMI 2.1 port. Now this does have um, a Dolby Vision IQ, it has HDR10 Plus Adaptive, it has HDR10 Gaming, all that fun stuff built into it. But what does that all mean for your TV viewing? And what does it have to do with whether we should actually go ahead and buy this TV? So it starts off that this is probably one of the best integrated TVs when it comes to voice assistance and of course, those kind of functionalities. Now we do know you can get TVs with Google Assistant. This of course has Alexa built in. And you see that that didn't actually cause a prompt, even though you've got that always listening features because there is a physical button to actually shut off the mic on the TV if you don't want that to be accessed and it gives you a visual prompt. And I do like that about that. There is an LED and also a prompt on screen for that aspect, which is good. Now, that being said though, that having the ability to use Alexa on the TV is really good because it not only allows you to search for shows quite easily, but actually just using your voice prompts, but it also allows you to go into say your uh, smart home collection with Alexa to see what's going on with your different devices. You can jump with an app. You can also go ahead and like order stuff onto your Alexa cart. Those kind of cool things are things you can do on this TV quite effectively. And I like that integration there. It's a much smoother process. You don't actually have to press the button on the remote control. Speaking of the remote, it still looks like an, a standard uh, Fire TV remote. You do have, of course, the different streaming service at the bottom. We have Prime Video, Netflix, Disney, Hulu. Now, HBO Max, you're not here, but House, I like to see a House of Dragon, you know, button right here at some point. Very simple and easy to use in terms of the TV remote, but that's not why we're here. We want to know what that local demon is, how is the picture quality, how fast and sharp and vibrant it is, especially for a TV at this price point. And this TV is currently priced at $7.99, which is probably one of the cheapest prices I've seen for a 65 inch TV with full local array dimming. So in terms of the image quality, it's actually pretty good. I wouldn't call it great, but I'll say it's really good. Uh, when you're watching content on here, it's very vibrant, it's sharp, uh, you've got some really clean quality. Now, of course, you will see, of course, uh, some of that lighting uh, imbalances in different zones when you're actually watching in darker scenes, of course, but it's still solid. Now, when it comes to gaming, on the other hand, we do have uh, that the fact that this TV does not support uh, 120 hertz, it is a 60 hertz display panel. So you're not gonna get all those uh, features or capabilities that you expect for your Xbox Series X, S, as well as also the PlayStation 5. I can see, as you can see on screen, it doesn't just support that, but it supports HDR gaming. So your games, HDR will show. So, you know, when you're playing games like, um, you know, your PlayStation 5, they look really vibrant and sharp. Same thing as your Xbox as well but you're still not getting a lot of that variable refresh rate because you can't go up to that 
But again, this is still a really nice choice in terms of just pricing for a TV. Then you have the new ambient setting, and that's what I have in the background with me right there. You can set it to either landscape, I've actually set mine over here to movies, um, and you can pick different options that will allow you to go ahead and have things that flow. Plus, it also has three different icon tabs, so you can expand that to show the full menu. And that's pretty cool because once you actually do that, that gives you a whole ton of things to actually look at here. So you can expand it and that gives you like your sticky notes. So you can actually have sticky notes on the TV uh, for your family, especially if it's something that they always turn on early in the morning to watch the news or cartoons. you be like, hey kids, you gotta do your homework first. You know, that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but then you can also access, of course, your smart devices. As you can see, my smart home favorites are there. Um, also, what's on Fire TV, House of the Dragon is one of the top shows. Go watch it, it is great. And then you can see weather and other recommendations. So those nice widgets all across your screen are great. You can also minimize it. Uh, you can have stuff like your Spotify play and also just turn off the screen if you want to. And Spotify will still play for you or Amazon Music as well. So those are pretty cool. Now, when I look at this TV overall, what do I actually think, right? Uh, price point is nice at $7.99 for a 65 inch TV. The image quality is decent. Uh, it is not the best thing in the world, but then again, I'm not spending $2,000 for a TV. This is not a QD OLED or an OLED TV uh, in that regard. Now, the features that Amazon is bringing to this TV is very key, especially if you're beginning to build out your smart home, you can actually use your TV as that basis around. I do like the features with the ambient controls and having those widgets in the sticky notes. Uh, that is actually pretty cool, especially if the TV revolves around the center within your home. This makes a lot of sense. But the Plus the fact that the, uh, the Fire TV OS itself has been much improved. It's one of, one of the great things I like about it now, it's that it feels more like a proper TV OS that allows for getting into the content you're looking for and the different services that you use much easier. And I think it adds to having this TV being solid. Is this the best TV in the world? Honestly, it is not. Is this, is this a great buy for a TV? So far in my experience, it is really solid. And if you're looking for a good TV at this price point, it will work well. Now, if you're watching, of course, Game of Thrones, and you're looking at that dark scene in House of Dragons or Game of Thrones, this TV will do the job. I just can't show you right now. It will do the job for you, and you should be able to watch those darker scenes pretty well. So this is Thunder E saying thank you. If you have any questions and comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.